Good morning all. Uh, we have uh, come to the uh, last part of module 2. That is the examples on the Euro core data. Uh, we have completed the Euro core data, the characteristic features. We have gone through the uh, morphological as well as anatomical features of uh, the type species in the Euro core data acidia. And uh, we have also seen the classification of Euro core data. So now we are going to deal with uh, three examples which are supposed to study as per your syllabus. The first one among them it is Doliolum. Doliolum, uh, you can see the uh, image and, uh, taken under microscope. It is um, um, coming under the tunicate uh, as the name suggests to have the uh, test or the tunic uh, covering the entire body wall. Then it possesses uh, two apertures. Uh, unlike the type species Acidia, which you have studied, in the case of um, Doliolum, the uh, what would you call the apertures are on the opposite sides, and the branchial and the atrial aperture it represents the anterior and the posterior end, and it is uh, transparent, and that is why you can see um, um, the entire internal parts very clearly uh, through the test, right? And uh, you can even see um, the uh, what you call encircling uh, muscle uh, bands. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight. You can see starting from the branchial aperture in the anterior end to the uh, um, atrial aperture. There are eight uh, what you call uh, this one the bands very clearly. And these are the major features of Dolmolum. Okay, so it comes under the kingdom Animalia, phylum Chordata, subphylum Eurochordata, class Thaliaceae. This, this is what you have already studied. Okay, order it is Doliolida. Then order is also referred as Cyclomyuria by some scientists. Uh, Cyclomyuria, the name as the name suggests, it is like cyclic or circle, right? Myuria, M Y A, which represents muscle. So actually, it is encircling muscle bands. So the or, uh, which the organism which pairs. Uh, encircling muscle bands that is the word meaning of cyclomyuria right and you can very clearly see the uh, uh, cyclomyuria uh, or the vertical encircling muscle bands in the doliolum uh, in the figure right so that is a uh, doliolum okay so this is the uh, doliolum the structure of doliolum uh, as we have seen the doliolum uh, is a free swimming pelagic thaliasium Okay, now before we go into detail into the unique uh, feature regarding the life cycle of uh, Doliolum, we can just uh, go through the structure of uh, the Doliolum. Now, this uh, is, represents the sexual phase, which is otherwise known as gonozoid, or it is also referred as solitaria because it, it is independent. This is a single individual and this is uh, independent. Okay, so it remains single solitary. So that is fine. And gonozoid is um, uh, possess both the gonads and the same individual. Okay, coming back to the structure. Here you can see the outermost body is covered with a test or a tunic. But unlike the acidia, the test is very transparent that all the internal uh, structures are very vis clearly visible. Okay, as such the body is uh, barrel shaped. Uh, you can see it is barrel shaped. Dhol, pole, remila, gender, pole, kerala shape, pang, no, ne? Okay, so it is barrel shaped and it does it. Uh, possess two apertures, the branchial aperture and the atrial aperture, but it is positioned on two opposite ends, and uh, that is it marks the anterior and the posterior end. Uh, the starting from the anterior end to the posterior end, the whole body is um, provided with eight muscle bands that completely encircle the body, and hence the uh, what you call the order is also referred as cyclomyuria. That is cyclo referring to circling muscle bands that is it okay so it's eight muscle bands they circle uh, that forms a complete circle around the body and it extends from anterior to the posterior uh, uh, end and um, uh, very clearly you can see all these bands through the test through the very transparent test okay now uh, unlike the um, acidia here you can see the what do you call the um, pharynx the branchial sac uh, it possesses uh, gill slits but it is very restricted to the posterior part of the pharynx right so the posterior part of the pharynx uh, possesses the um, gill slits and they are very few in number okay um, against what we have seen in the case of uh, this one what do you call the acidia um, and uh, um, 
uh, apart from that you can see the dorsal tubercle nerve, nerve ganglion neural gland etc on the dorsal side while on the ventral side you can see the heart uh, positioned very close to the endostyle isn't it on the ventral part of the uh, endostyle okay so this is the basic feature of the dolulum so now we can see in detail the two phases now the reproduction is highly specialized in the case of dolulum and the whole life cycle is completed passing through two distinct phases distinct in the sense it is very, very clearly obvious from external features okay two phases solitary sexual gonozoid which alternates with a colonial asexual gregaria or the oozoid okay gonozoid is a sexual individual and it is barrel shaped as is seen in this figure um, they have both um, branchial and atrial apertures at opposite ends and each of these apertures is surrounded by almost 10 to 12 lobes that uh, contains the sens sensory structures or the receptors okay as we have seen test is extremely thin and transparent and through which the, all the internal structures are clearly visible okay um, as we have seen in the uh, image the, of the uh, doliolum you could have you could see the even the gill slits uh, marked isn't it so the mantle it contains or around eight muzzle bands uh, completely uh, completely encircling the body and the first and the last muzzle band it acts as sphincters sphincters in the sense somewhat like a valve right so it um, contracts and closes the aperture and it expands and opens the aperture that is how it works okay we saw that doliolum is a pelagic one so gonozoid is a pelagic one and how does it move it moves by jet propulsion that is it takes a um, good amount of water through the branchial aperture it fills up the atrial cavity okay how it happens it enters the branchial aperture it through the branchial aperture it reaches the pharyngeal region and through the gill slits it moves out into the atrial cavity okay now what happens is with the help of the muscles and the atrial aperture the water is uh, all uh, like um, it is propelled out in a jet okay fashion so what happens uh, the the animal moves in the opposite direction of that of the water movement so there is a jet propel it moves by jet propulsion of water through the atrial aperture by the contraction of muscles okay as we have seen the pharynx is perforated only posteriorly uh, by dorsal and ventral rows of gill slits right unlike acidia in the case of doliolum the gonozoid phase of doliolum it doesn't have dorsal lamina it doesn't possess dorsal lamina but obviously endostyle is present you can see it marked over there endostyle is present peripharyngeal bands are present peripharyngeal bands were present between the uh, uh, what do you call uh, in the pharynx uh, and it demarcated the branchial sac from the peripharyngeal region dorsal tubercle is present dorsal tubercle was a structure associated with the subneural gland here it is marked as neural gland but uh, we have already learned it as a subneural gland okay so those are the, those were the structures then heart we have seen it lies mid ventrally uh, very close to the endostyle posterior on the posterior side of the endostyle okay here um, um, the gonozoid it is a hermaphrodite and uh, uh, it testis lies very close to the endostyle and ovary behind it you can see it all labeled over there and all the duct from the testis as well as the ovary opens into the atrial cavity right now here ovary matures first so ovum is produced early earlier than the sperm and the mature ovum it is released into the atrial cavity along with the water uh, which moves out through the atrial aperture the egg a mature egg is also taken out and there the fertilization takes place with the sperm which is released from other um, gonozoids so fertilization is completely external okay now the zygote formed it develops into a tailed tadpole larva this uh, tail tadpole larva they acquire uh, eight muzzle bands this, uh, like the gonozoid and they metamorphose into the asexual phase okay oozoid phase which is gregaria uh, i hope this this part is clear okay so we will see the uh, features of oozoid okay. so um oozoid here uh, as we have seen, it is a gonozoid. From there, the um, gametes develop. The gametes um, um, undergo for, uh, fertilization externally, and it uh, develops the uh, zygote. The zygote uh, hatches out into a tailed tadpole larva, isn't it? So this tadpole larva metamorphoses into oozoid. So that is where the oozoid comes up. 
Now, what happens to the oozoid? Oozoid resembles the gonozoid in the shape. You can see it is almost barrel shape. Uh, very slight differences uh, are there. One is um, the this um, oozoid. It lacks the uh, what call gonads. They don't have any um, testes or ovary. Uh, and uh, um, just like the um, gonozoid, the oozoids also have uh, atrial and the branchial aperture. They have 10 to 10 to 12 lobes on the along the apertures. Then uh, against eight muscle bands in the gonozoid, the oozoid possesses nine muscle bands. Okay, you can see uh, they have. Uh, nine uh, muscle bands on their uh, around their body. Okay, um, gill slits, the pharyngeal gill slits. Here you can see they are very few. As against the gonozoid, the uh, number is less, but the size is larger. So uh, the pharyngeal gill slits uh, in oozoids are large but few in number. And the most important feature uh, of uh, oozoid are uh, the presence of two structures. Okay, or two processes we can see. One is the cadophore and the second is the ventral stolon. The cadophore is, uh, you, as you can see, it is posterior uh, laterally present. Uh, on the lateral side, uh, you can see posterior dorsally, there is an elongated process and that is what is referred as a cadophore. Okay, and uh, stolon, it is ventrally positioned. You can see the ventral stolon very close to the uh, fifth muscle band, isn't it? Just, uh, um, we can say it is just behind the fifth muscle band, small ventral stone. These two are the structures which are unique to oozoid, which is, uh, uh, which actually help in uh, differentiating the two barrel shaped doliolum uh, phases, okay, uh, gonozoid on oozoid. Now the stolen, the ventral stolen, it gives rise to a large number of small probuds right uh, probuds in the sense you can see in the ventral stolen uh, marked over here there are certain structures attached to it posteriorly right and uh, uh, here cycle here you can see yeah here you can see the life cycle so it is free swimming gonozoid is there <coughs> sorry which possess both the gonads the female gonad, it produces um, uh, what you call ovum and it matures early. This ovum is released out into the external watery medium, marine medium, and their fertilization takes place externally. And once the fertilization is complete and zygote is formed, it hatches out into tailed tadpole larva. The tailed tadpole larva then uh, metamorphose into the oozoid. Okay. So, whatever uh, phases are given in the blue, it represents the sexual phase. Right, that represents a sexual phase. Now, uh, coming to the next one, the oozoid. Right, so uh, tail, tailed tadpole larva develop into oozoid, isn't it? The oozoid is um, um, represented by a, a barrel shaped structure, but with the presence of a uh, uh, what you call a process, uh, la posterior dorsal process known as the cadophore. Right, and along with that, they also possess ventrally positioned stolon. This ventral stolon is uh, meant for developing the buds, isn't it? The buds later slowly move up along the body wall and reach the carrefour. There it, uh, what you call, uh, aligns itself into three rows, okay, two lateral rows and one median row. The two lateral rows, the buds develop into what is known as a trophozoid. Okay, this trophozoid is meant for um, the, what you call, uh, uh, the nutrition and respiration for the whole colony. While the um, maiden zoid, it develops into the uh, forozoids. And these forozoids, it develops uh, into uh, gonozoids. Actually, that is the maiden, but develops into the gonozoid. And the uh, whole sexual phase is completed. Now the sexual phase starts again. So this is the whole life cycle. I hope it is uh, clear. Okay, so it is actually, here you can see two different forms exist, isn't it? And one is sexual and the other is asexual. So, there is an alternation of generation. So, doliolum is unique in having alternation of generation between a sexual phase and asexual phase. A sexual uh, gonozoid and asexual uh, oozoid phase. Okay, or it can be like between uh, solitaria and gregaria phase. Fine. Along with that, it also represents or exhibits polymorphism. 
in the sense uh, you can see in the dolyola uh, uh, gregaria phase it develops different kinds of zooids isn't it you have gastrozooid or trophozoid you have uh, the uh, porozoid they have they develop later the uh, gonozoids isn't it so these uh, 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 what do you call the same organism exists at the same time in different forms right so that kind of a, uh, a phenomenon is known as polymorphism so here dolyolum is a unique in ha in exhibiting both polymorphism in the form of gastrozoids porozoids etc it also exhibits alternation of generation so that is very unique and for the exam you can expect question regarding alternation of generation of dolyolum so when you are explaining you may have to draw the diagram or draw the uh, flow chart okay right so that is regarding the uh, dolyolum uh, thank you refer the book and make a note on that